Right, Chubby Chasers, quick catch up. So I did say I'd start producing a few more of these videos and I thought I'd just keep you updated on the progress that I'm making. I'm, I'm off work for a few days, so hopefully between uh, doing the aeroplane and I've got some work to do on the old motorhome camper van kind of thing. Um, but hopefully I can make a little bit of progress on the aeroplane. I'm just driving at the moment again. Uh, but this is not aeroplane business. Um, I'm actually off to give a lecture uh, down in Boston. I know I've just said it's my day off, but I've, I've volunteered the time to come and do this. So, um, so I'm just going to do this voluntary lecture and then I'm going to get some more work done. The first thing though that I had to do when I got the aeroplane back, just trying to concentrate on the road chubsters, the first thing that I had to do was get the garage sorted and there was a nice surprise for me when I got back because um, the wife and my daughter and my son-in-law who were visiting from uh, Welsh Wheels, they were, they were up here. They actually sorted my garage out for me as a surprise when I got there. Uh, the, the issue with that, that was great so I could get the aeroplane in. I was really chuffed. It saved me a lot of work at night after I'd driven three and a half hours to fetch the aeroplane in three and a half hours back. The only issue with that of course is they you know they they did what they could and just basically packed everything into the periphery so the aeroplane could get in so I've had to spend about three days trying to sort through everything, uh, chuck away the junk and try and get things into some semblance of order because uh, there's tools scattered everywhere and I can never find anything and that's the issue. So I spent days doing it uh, and I've decided to do a few other things. It's gonna become a bit of a man shed. So I've moved a, a sofa into there. Uh, I've got a fridge freezer, a coffee machine. I'm gonna be moving the uh, cigar humidor into there. It's a vice, I know, don't do it very often, but it's there for when I do. Uh, my whiskies, and uh, I'm gonna have a bit of a man shed area. Now it is an issue because, you know, this is a UK man shed, and, and sadly in the UK, we live in rabbit hutches. We don't have much space for man sheds and uh, shops and carpenter, whatever you decide to call them. Um, we live in these tiny little spaces, but luckily, I live in a relatively large house in the UK, very small compared to the houses I've lived in in Spain and Australia. Uh, but, you know, I've, I've made the best of, of what I've got, which is more than a lot of people have, so, so I should be grateful. And I wanted to kind of make it an area where I could spend some time, uh, particularly a bit of, you know, man alone time or man with his mates time, because one of the secrets, I think, to uh, building a kit aeroplane is time and is time spent on the project and I've been told with people who have got great experience that you should always do something on your aeroplane every day even if it's only 10 minutes worth of work and I think those are wise words because they keep you connected to the project and you can make progress even with 10 minutes at a time but what happens is if you don't visit your aeroplane and you don't do things in there, one day off becomes three weeks and four weeks and you lose that connection with the project and it, and it doesn't progress. And there's a lot of people who start these projects that don't progress. And, uh, and I want to try and make sure that, that I'm not one of them. Oh, it's too hot. Can't bother to do anything. Look, haven't done anything yet. Oh my God, how long does it take? This is gonna need whiskey. Whiskey and the first part of the aircraft construction manual. After this, there's that bit, which is a fuselage manual. We're gonna start here. But much whiskey is needed. I put some carpet on the bench. That was in the manual. That's about it. Got some floorboards, aeroplane, sunshine, <sighs> recliner. We 
not getting on very fast. So a couple of jobs to do then. First job is I've got to finish sorting out the garage. Uh, you can see I managed to get the aeroplane in. A lot of stuff was moved out, but I've got a lot of stuff left. Um, this is all my junk and it needs packing a little bit neater. There's the old paramotor engine or motor as you call it in Australia. And the frames down there with other bits and pieces. And this is the fuselage of the KFA Safari. So a few jobs to do. Um, the paintwork, there's a few patches of paintwork kicking around. If you look here, um, you can see, I don't know whether it's the key that's been rubbing or something's been rubbing there in transit. Uh, he took the paint off there. He did bend the key as well. Something's been kind of pressing down here. Bent the key, rubbed the paint there, uh, rubbed the paint here at the top. So we can get uh, focused on that with the old iPhone that I'm using at the moment. So that's a couple of jobs to do to start with. Uh, next job is uh, here, this uh, it's not been cut out properly. If you look at this side, um, we've got quite a good chunk cut out there. I would imagine that's supposed to be symmetrical. I don't see any reason why not. And it's different and it's not actually sitting or seated. Uh, and you can see it's crossing there. So I'm probably going to see if these are identical. Flip it over and shape this side the same as that side. Um, that's one of the first jobs so a few bits and pieces to to start with I think we're going to start tidying the garage so I've set it up as a bit of a man shed area I want to go and spend a bit of time in there I've got somewhere to drink my whiskey somewhere to have a, a smoke of, of a cigar every now and again I mean that's once in a blue moon guys don't worry I'm not a habitual smoker um, but it's a vice and so I can sit there spend a bit of time and and do things bit by bit and I think a lot of project building as well is that kind of dreaming and scheming and planning and looking at things and that's why I've set things out the way they are so I'm kind of set out like that I've done a lot of sorting it's not perfect yet but I kind of think I need to get on a little bit with the project as well as the garage. So, so I've made a start. And the first thing I've started on is paintwork. Now the aeroplane's been painted. It's got um, a rust in your know, corrosion inhibiting uh, primer on there. Uh, some South African stuff that's supposed to be really good, but we're not allowed in the UK. Um, not in its liquid form and so that's we're a bit prissy here in the uk so it probably work means it works 10 times better than anything that we've got but you know uh, the man doesn't trust us to be able to use it safely so we're not allowed it but anyway um it's been coated with that and then it's got a black satin uh, color over the top and but unfortunately during transit some of the paintwork's got damaged there's, there's a part where something's been rubbing on this side of the aircraft in the container. I can tell because the key to the luggage door on the aeroplane was left in the luggage door and tie wrapped on so it wasn't lost. But it's obviously been pressing because the key or one of the keys is bent. And just above that there's a, a rub mark and it's rubbed through the paintwork, through the primer undercoat and into onto the metal. So uh, I've got to sort that out. There's also another patch that's uh, where the rudder and the tailplane, where they were tie wrapped to the top of the aeroplane in transit and the tie wraps have, they've done even worse damage. They've kind of rubbed through the paintwork and down to bare metal. So what I've got, I've got some zinc based primer anyway uh, that I've had previously. Uh, which is good for, for steel, it, it bonds to the steel and inhibits corrosion just in those little spots and I've also bought some two pack satin black paint um, I have all the equipment, you know, the, the masks and uh, uh, the spray guns and things like that for spraying two pack so 
Uh, so I've decided uh, to do it with that because it's just that much harder. There's also going to be some more spraying going on. The floor boards, if that's the right word, but the base of the floor of the cockpit and the luggage compartment is, is made out of some kind of lightweight wood. I'm not sure what it is, uh, but it's a very lightweight wood with holes drilled into it to make it even lighter. Now, I've got an issue with one of those at the front. It doesn't look like it's been routed out properly at the edge. It's a bit too, uh, a bit too tight and it's not uh, an exact mirror of the opposite side, which I believe it should be. So the first job is I'm going to be uh, laying one on top of the other, marking where it should be routed to and then gently routing out to that profile uh, and checking it fits nice and snug and all looks nice and symmetrical. I can't believe that you came into my life You made me feel again, now it's my turn You say you've always been a little bit shy But I can put an end to your fears Let me show you a Once that's done, uh, next we'll be uh, putting some kind of covering on and it's recommended that you either use something like a clear coat or a varnish and I've decided to go for uh, a two-pack clear coat and the reason behind that is the two-pack paints harder, it's just harder and it's more scratch resistant. Now there is going to be a covering over the top of that, I'm not sure what's going to go on it yet but uh, there will be a covering uh, for your feet to go on but at least the wood is sealed, protected and what it's protected with is harder and more scratch resistant. So um, I've got to assemble a bit of a spray booth for that small one um, which I've decided to do. So those are the first jobs, after that we'll be putting in some of the angle into the aeroplane that allows those floorboards to be seated snugly and firm, so a little bit of angle iron. Uh, that's provided that I've got to, uh, I believe, drill out and, and rivet onto the aeroplane frame. So there we go. That's what we're going to be getting up to. Um, God, I better watch the speed limit here. Just set the, that's it, set the speed limiter. Um, anyway, I did say that I'd reach out and, and make some more of these videos. I've done that. Uh, I've had some great comments. Thank you very much to everybody that's reached out and, uh, and said that they're glad that I'm back making the videos. I'm glad to be back making them. We had a funny couple of years, didn't we, over the last few years? And um, there's been a lot of disruption in my life moving around from country to country. But uh, we're a bit more settled now, for now. Uh, and I'm going to try and get back into these videos, particularly because I've got something to put in there. I mean, the the paramotor videos kind of ceased because the paramotoring in my life had ceased because of everything else that was going on. Um, now I've got something that I can uh, dig myself back into and we can make a few more videos. Thank you to everybody again. Uh, thank you to the new subscribers. So uh, a few of you have, have decided you'd like to follow this journey. I was, I was quite pleased I thought oh my gosh there's gonna be a slight change from paramotors um, to light aviation but not complete change as I said that I've got things to do with the other paramotor which I'll show you soon um, and I thought I'll lose a bunch of subscribers which is which is fine if the channel's not for you it's not for you but I was really pleased that I actually had a bit of a boost in subscribership so only a small one 
Um, but I thought, hey, people, people perhaps want to see these videos. So I was dead chuffed with that. Chuffed, there's an English word, eh? So, once again, if you did like this video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, apparently it helps with the algorithm. If you didn't like the video, give it a thumbs up anyway. If you haven't done already, please hit that subscribe button. Uh, let's see that subscribership grow. That kind of gives me confidence that people are enjoying what I'm doing and, uh, uh, and people are coming on board. Hit the bell notification as well, that does help. Uh, that notifies you when, when I produce a new video uh, and helps keep you connected and, and in touch. And in the meanwhile, thanks for watching. Bye for now.